Hello, what have we here? Hey toy fans, Aaron here. Today we're going to take a look at the 6 inch Black Series Lando Calrissian. So let's head to that table and check them out. And here is a look at that packaging. We are back to the red and black look. All done with the 40th anniversary figures. That only lasted two waves. So you get your, uh, as I said, red and black window box. You see the figure in the front through the window here. Sketch artwork of Billy D. Williams as Lando down in the lower right corner. Taking a look at the side, he is number 39 in the lineup. Same thing, didn't skip a beat. The Imperial uh, Royal Guard is 38. And then for the backside, much of the same. You got the number 39 in the top right corner. Brief description of Lando in the various languages there. And a bunch of legal information at the bottom. Taking a look at the figure out of the packaging, I gotta say this is another sweet looking figure. Going in on that head sculpting, I think the resemblance to Billy D. Williams is absolutely there. It's not helped by the paint applications, which is still pretty decent looking, but I've seen uh, photos on Instagram, I don't remember the user, but they've done their own paint applications to the face and just made it look outstanding, like a very good resemblance to Billy D. Williams. So I really do feel, sculpt wise, they're spot on with this. Paint application, though, just isn't helping that cause, but I do still think, like I said, that it does look good. I mean, the mustache is painted decently, the eyes are in place, the eyebrows don't look too shabby either, and you got a nice paint job on the hair area. Going in for the rest of the body and his chest area, the midsection, uh, I think the clothing looks great. You have a little bit of black paint detailing on the collar area of his shirt, along with uh, the cuffs of the sleeves. I will say, I'm just not a fan of how you can see the... Uh, chest articulation at that midsection of the chest at the torso i much prefer the look of it when it's at the belt area at the waist but that's just me i you know maybe everyone's got their own preference i don't know what determines how it gets made but i just prefer the look of it when it's at the waist going in through the belt area everything looks very well represented here with the way the styling is done and as far as the rest of the figure waist down you know blue pants looks pretty good uh the waist area that pelvic area Something seems a little different to me, like it, it seems a lot slimmer. I don't recall that you could really kind of look through and see the top of the leg piece of the toy. Usually it seems to be hidden better by that joint area. And looking down at the feet of the figure, he's got some nice shiny black boots on, or what I assume are boots, since the rest is hidden under the pants. And if you didn't know already, that cape is removable, just slides on and off, very nice. It is that soft plastic, we are not getting a soft goods cloth robe here, or a cape rather. And I like that choice for this figure. I, I do think that this still sits on very nicely on the shoulder. And sometimes things can be hit or miss, in my opinion, on the cloth, you know, the fabric capes and robes and stuff. And even with the cape over the shoulder, it doesn't inhibit the posability of the arms all that much. If you do start to raise them up high above, you know, shoulder level, then it's going to pop and lift up and stuff. But I think for the most part, I think it's a pretty good choice and it does hold well. As far as the other accessories he comes with, one of those is a Rebel Blaster. Pretty decent looking, you know, it's got a little bit of detailing in the sculpt, silver painting at the tip of the gun. It's a bit of an interesting choice to have this blaster since it's not what he used in the movie. Pretty sure all he used was a Stormtrooper Blaster. As far as I can tell from looking up, it seems like everything promotional wise with this character that you've seen and, you know, artwork and books and, and character photos in general, he does always seem to be posed with this weapon. And then also as a nice little added touch, you do get his little communicator accessory. It's a pretty nice looking device, a little bit of silver and gold painting. Got some decent detailing in it as well, and it does fit nicely in his left hand. As far as the articulation goes, you do get just about everything you would expect. The head turns nicely from side to side. It is on a little hinge, so you get just an ever so slight amount of movement up and down. Those shoulders, of course, do go up, swing around no problem, and they come out side to side like so. And then for that elbow area, you do get a good 90 degree bend here. Comes down nicely and swivels at the elbow as well. As for the wrist articulation, both hands do swivel around and both hands are side to side movement for that articulation in there. As for the waist area, he turns around side to side. Nothing for crunching. So he's going to stay pretty straight through there. Getting into the leg area, you do get both legs coming out very nice, and they both go back a little bit there. At the top of the thigh, each leg does twist around. You get your double joint at the knee, 
So he's able to lift those legs up pretty good, or back rather. And then at the feet area, that ankle does swing around. There's a little pin there, so you can pivot that ankle side to side. And there's your forward and back on the foot. So overall, I really do like this Lando figure. I think the sculpting is great. Paint application is pretty good as well. And hopefully you on the hunt for this one can find one on your store shelves or online like I did. All right, that wraps up this look at the 6-inch Black Series Lando Calrissian. I'm interested to know your thoughts on this figure in the comment section below. And as always, thanks for watching.